property pulled up right in front of your face on the computer. Like it's a must. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna add that it must has. Like you must have like the property right in front of your face so you don't fuck up on nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're, like, if I have you're so many. About the... Go ahead. Go ahead. When when I have uh when I'm on the phone with the seller, I have the Zillow link open. I have the Deal Machine link open. I have the Realtor.com link. Go every link open so I don't fuck up on nothing. Yeah. I got a property pulled up when, when y'all are ready. Who Who is this? Is this Simon? Yes. Sweet. So, hey, Simon, are you okay with us calling you that? It just makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right. One second. I made this Discord kind of like as a joke, so that's why I have it as Flying Toast, but yeah. All right. I just <laughs> changed your little nickname just so people know what to... I mean, there's nothing wrong calling you Flying Toast, but it's just kind of like a wild card name. Yeah, no, I get it. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and start it off, right? Uh, Kaz, are you okay with that, with uh, Simon sharing property? No, uh, I don't care. Chris, what are your thoughts? Uh, Wait, what do you mean by sharing good. property? Is it, is it, isn't it going to, like, block the call? No, uh, Simon, what, what were you going for here? He muted himself. There he is. I'm trying to be a buyer. What? Oh, you're looking to do some. You're looking to simulate a cold call with your property. Yeah. Okay. Who's your Who's your seller? I don't know who wants to be my seller. Send me the information. Yeah, Chris is going to be your seller. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now, for those of you tuning in right now, what's happening is Simon here is going to send Chris, one of the admins here, um, a property, and what they're going to do is simulate a cold call. And Chris is going to role play as the seller. Simon is going to role play as the buyer. We're going to let them finish the call. And then um, there'll be some time to, uh, for feedback after the fact. So what was done right? What could have been better, et cetera. I have right? a question for someone. Does anyone here want to make 20 bucks through Cash App? Speak First person would say me. Hey, All right. Why? All right. Lithical, I think it was you. I, or anybody, honestly. If anyone wants to make 20 bucks, I need one person to record the entire thing audio as well. Oh, I got you, brother. Don't worry. worry. Who who can do that? Lithical, you got it. Yeah, I got y'all. All right, can you record the entire Discord, the audio, and everything from start to finish? Yes, sir. All right, DM me your cash app. All right, on the, <laughs> the Discord. Yeah. All right, for sure. And then send sure. me the info for your property, Simon. Okay. The uh the address is two eight eight zero. Dahlia D A H L I A. Avenue in San Diego, California. Alrighty. It was 280? No, 2880. 2880. And that was one more time. D H D A H L I A Avenue. Oh, yeah, got it. San Diego, California. Yeah. White House, brown roof. Yeah, four bed, two bath, 1,400 square feet. All right, value of like a little under 800K owned by Jessica Toby. It's listed on the market. What do you mean? What are you doing I, with this? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Azillo. It's just a random property. Oh, oh okay, okay. I thought this was what you were working on. Sorry. No, no. Uh, give me two seconds to get familiar with this. So you're going to be the buyer and I'm going to be the seller. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> whenever you're ready. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, is this uh, Chris? It is. Who is this? Hey, Chris. How you doing? My name is Simon. I'm a uh, real estate investor. I was looking at, uh, are you, do you own the property 288 Dahlia, 2880 Dahlia Avenue in San Diego? I, I do, yes. Okay, great. So I was just uh, in the market for purchasing some houses. I was wondering if you were in the market to sell. Um, it depends. A lot, a lot of factors, actually. I wasn't necessarily interested in selling. You know, I just took out a new mortgage. Um, but I'm willing to hear you out. I do have a few minutes, so. All right. Well, what would make you sell? Um, the right offer, <laughs> I guess. Gotcha, that's pretty much, gotcha. that's it. You know, I'm fairly happy with my property. You know, there's a couple updates okay. I've done again. I just took out a new mortgage, so. All right, gotcha. So um, if I can ask you some questions about the property, you got a couple minutes, right? I do. All right. So I'm showing here four bed, two bath, and. Approximately 1,400 square feet. 
1500 1490 okay gotcha so um have you had to do any repairs how, how let me ask you how long have you owned the property for uh since 2020 a couple of years okay in that time frame have you had to make any uh repairs any any big changes to the property uh no i didn't have to i uh, was you know not very happy with the kitchen and the bathroom uh, outdated so we did do some updates shaker cabinets quartz countertops um nothing too serious though just cosmetics you know that increase value at the end of the day okay gotcha is there anything about like the the neighborhood or the area that you can tell me about uh you know other than good schools um friendly neighbors you know the neighborhood's not the best obviously you know a lot of these houses are somewhat on the rundown end i've been doing my best to keep up with my own um you know but it doesn't work as well as it should when the rest of your neighbors don't cooperate um, so no, not, yeah. I mean, there's nothing, no, no serious negatives, you know, good crime rate is okay for where we are. Uh, you know, again, school systems are okay. Uh, other than that, you know, no, no issues. Okay. Gotcha. What, um, what, what number would make you happy walking away from this house? <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I'd have to look at current market trend and see where I'm at. I don't know. Did you have something in mind? Did you do some research already? Uh, yeah. So it, it looks like the me, property. <laughs> Am I like selling it property. to you or are you buying it? You know, you sell, you're trying to sell buy it for me. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Gotcha. So it, it looks like the properties around your area are going for um, around the 700 area. Okay. Um, is that something that you'd be willing to kind of uh, talk about? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'd, I'd like some time to do my own due diligence as well. You know, you kind of caught me off guard. Uh, this is the first call I've received in regard to selling. So you know, I mean, if again, cash talks, bullshit walks. So if, if, you know, the numbers are there, they're there. I can tell you right off the bat, I have a $583,000 outstanding mortgage balance. Um, and I am tax delinquent. <laughs> so I tried selling on the MLS, um, was up there for about 33 days and I ended up taking it down, you know, agents recommendations. Uh, it's not under contract with the brokerage anymore. Um, you know, I've kind of just sat back and, you know, paid off what I can and, you know, again, make repairs as necessary. Gotcha. How much, how much has, have you uh, put into repairs? Uh, kitchen and bath totaled about $35,000. I want to say between both bathrooms and the kitchen, you know, light remodel both. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to throw you a number. Um, and I guess we will go from there. All right. I'm going to stop you right there. Um, pro tip for some of you guys. So when you guys are reaching out to, sorry to interrupt you, Simon, um, no, no problem. when you guys are reaching out to sellers, you never want to <laughs> make an offer in the first call. Um, you know, you want to quickly run over numbers, you know, do them in your head, look at them on paper and make sure they make sense before you reach out. You don't want to waste any time. You want to work efficiently. Um, you know, you don't want to spend all of this time doing real numbers and coming up with ARVs and making sure that every dollar penny works, you know, only to be met with an instant no or, you know, a no, you know, a no answer uh, or, you know, be shut down toward the end of your conversation. Nate, if okay. you want to chime in, I know you, you elaborated more on how that. I agree. To read the reason, and again, the logical way of thinking of this real quick, and then I'll let y'all get back to it, is the reason why you wouldn't make an offer right here is how do you even know, like, if, you know, unless you did assessment prior to this, which we don't recommend because you don't even know if he's like actually wanting to sell, the first initial call, you wouldn't have done the assessment up to this point. It, it, whatever his offer, whatever his, uh, you know, happy number is, we don't know yet. The th the, whenever we get off the phone, that's our chance to take that number, take the information that he gave us, um, and then run comps. Because if we try to run comps before he gives us detailed information about the stuff we can't see on Zillow, the stuff we can't see on Deal Machine, we need that information first before we start deciding where this house stacks up compared to other properties in the neighborhood. So there's no way that we can truly know if where our offer is going to be on this call, we haven't had any time to assess what a good offer is. And uh, the, the common misconception is like, well, if, as long as I negotiate them down from seller price with the seller's price, then it's a good deal because I was able to talk them down. But the, no one said that the seller's price was anywhere close to where it needs to be. You know what I'm saying? If you just because you talked them down like 30, 40 K from where they wanted, no one said that that price stacks up compared to the other comps in the area. So the main point of the first initial call is just introductions, asking a couple questions, or excuse me, several questions about the property. So you truly understand what's going on, both on paper, on the property, inside the property, under the property, things, things of that nature, just for you to get as much information as you can. You get off the phone, run your comps, then come back with the offer, okay? Gotcha. 
We can take it back Most, to um uh just one more thing. Um this is this is just me, but like it's because I'm very I'm very manipulative in this game. And I me personally, I I wouldn't really ask the seller, what do you want? Because you you told them, um, you know, what do you want for this house? It's, it's not what they want. It's what, you know, the best number if so I can work for uh the buyers. So me personally, I, I wouldn't ask that because it's it's gonna make them more firm about their price. And they're going to be like, basically through the uh, seller's head, they're going to be like, oh, he's asking me what I want. It's Christmas. He's Santa Claus. Oh, I'm going to tell him I want 100K more than what I, than the actual price. You know what I mean? Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. So so should I make the offer first or let or let them make an offer first? Uh, no. Repeat that again. Should, should I? let them should i be the one to present an offer first after after i get off the call and i do some research right and then i get back on should i say hey this is how much w would you be willing to take this well or first you would want to so you would want the way like, i would work on it would be um you know after your initial you know outreach call your i call that the building rapport call you know the getting to know them call um once you've established that they are willing to sell, whether they're unmotivated or, you know, extremely motivated or somewhere in the middle, you'll have a pretty good understanding of where they're at. You will then go and do your numbers. You will use your calculations, formulas, whatever software that you have. That Research you use time. You, right, correct. Um, you'll add, you, then you will uh, analyze the deal for a wholesale deal. You'll call him back. You'll say, hey, you know, I came up with what I came up with. But, hey, just out of curiosity, you know, like in a perfect world, you know, what would you like for this property given its current yeah. condition? And current market value then you would gauge the conversation you know wherever he was at this doesn't mean change your number <laughs> if he comes in higher than you are mm -hmm. uh, instead make your offer let him know why um you know whether it's my agent you know ran actual real-time data analysis on your market and you know this is what it's going to be worth upon remodel and sale you know use as many what do you say how do you say this as many tools in your shed i guess as you as you possibly Ammo. can it's right, ammo. There you go. Ammo. There you go. Sorry, Nate. <laughs> um, yeah. Use as much of your ammo as possible to, you know, make them understand and let them understand why you're such a lower offer than theirs. Because nine times out of ten, you know, their offer is obviously going to be, you know, what they're looking to get is going to be higher than what you're offering. Um, and if it's lower than, mm -hmm. then you're good where you're at. I mean, or you can, you know, if it's lower, I would stick where you're at. Just be ethical. You know, don't use that as an opportunity to get more. Um, you know, nine times out of 10, they're going to, if you said, let me come back, you know, let me do some more research and come back and it was lower and it matched theirs, there was a thousand or so off. You might lose that. You know, they can sense the unethical bullshit from a mile away. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, yep. do your research, find a number that works, make sure it works out for both your end buyer, your investor, you and your seller. You are all winning. There needs to be four wins. Otherwise it's not a deal. You know, you're not here to take advantage of someone you are here to do true numbers, you know, come up with an actual solution for them, whether it's they're in foreclosure, they don't have money to re for repairs, their water shut off, whatever it may be, you know, get them as much as you can. You don't have to be greedy. You know, a lot of you exactly. see, you know, in the other chat, these 80,000, 200, whatever wholesale fees, that's not realistic uh, from someone who's done 32 of these. You know, Casmil has done a few as well. There's a lot of people in here that actually do deals here locally in real life that those aren't realistic. You know, your average wholesale fee is going to be like 8,500 bucks, give or take, on a good day. And that's, that's not, I'm not even exaggerating. So, you know, you guys need to make sure you're working in their favor as well, because that, at the end of the day, that's what you're here for. You know, you're not here to, to screw them out of all their money and run away. Just real quickly, okay. I'm going to make this even simpler to simplify it even further for everyone listening, not just Simon, but you're trying to give the impression that you're on their side. You're not working for your, you're not on your side trying to make the most you can do. So on the initial call, that can be one of the questions. The only time price comes up is, okay, hey, you know what? It sounds like I pretty much have all the information I need. I appreciate all the information you're giving me. Um, I'm going to take this back to my team, but just so I know where you're at um, and so I can go to bat for you, what number What number would uh, bring a smile to your face? What can I, what can I uh, aim for whenever I go talk to my team? You see how I'm wording it? It's like yeah, I'm on your side. Exactly. I'm going to take this to my team, but... I want to. I, I want this to happen. I want this deal to happen for you and us yep, at the same time. Exactly. So, what number can I fight for on your behalf? Do you see what I'm saying? That's exactly. a, that's different. See how I'm wording that instead of just how much do you want for the house? It's it's a. It, it's, mm -hmm. Do you you feel the <laughs> feeling that it invokes and how they differ? There's example. Exhibit A is how much do you want for the house? How much do you want to sell it for? Exhibit two. Excuse me. Exhibit B is saying, all right, great. Looks like a great property. I think I have everything I need. I'm going to go to bat for you, 
Uh, but when I do, can you let me know what price would bring a smile to your face so I can, exactly. you know, uh, fight, you know, fight on your behalf when I take this to my team? You see what I'm saying? And they'll be much more happier and relaxed and comfortable to, to tell you what they want for the house. And then when they do, they say, OK, well, I would love to get 185 for it. And you'd be like, OK, great. Awesome. I'm going to make sure that when I take this back to my team, that uh, I'll, I'll let them know that uh, Chris wants 185 for it. OK, and then that's going to make them feel good. All right, great. Great. I feel understood. I feel heard. Somebody's going to uh, I feel like he this guy took he took notes down and he's going to try to see if I can get this number. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Nate is absolutely like 100 percent correct. If some of you guys know in here, I do have a current lead right now. Um, so he wanted he's he's not an investor. He, he like the house was just passed down to him by his brother and he fixed it. And it's in like a, a neighborhood in Detroit. And like he's listing it. Well, he didn't list it. He's selling it for way more than the ARV. And I'm trying to let him know like why and like i'm showing him motivation that i'm on his side and i even told him hey if you want it for the price that you want it for i highly recommend you list it on zillow because it's an off-market property so i'm i'm like trying to show him that i'm on his side he's even calling me he literally woke me up one day from my you know i was sleeping and he called me saying hey i don't know what to do man um nobody's buying the house i'll, I'll give it to you 20k lower and i keep telling him like that's still I, I physically can't do that. Like I even showed my cash buyer. Listen, guys, he wanted eighty thousand. The ARV is like seventy something. I showed my cash buyer. He said he's not buying that shit unless you get it for thirty. I was like, all right. And he even knows that. The uh, the lead knows that I, I'm trying to get it at thirty. And I'm telling him, listen, I know if I was if I was in your position, I wouldn't I wouldn't even take my offer because I know you put the work into it. So I recommend you. You post it on Zillow. And to this day, he still hasn't posted it on Zillow. I don't know what he's doing. But every week, he's calling me. He's, he's asking me for advice. So it's, I'm showing him that I'm on his side. So there's going to be that one day, because he's very motivated. There's going to be that one day where he's going to call me and say, fuck it. I'll take the 30000 Mm-hmm. That's true. So as a complete noob. Just, just a quick question that I had. What's up? Uh, yeah. When I, yeah, when I called, and this is just, uh, I don't know, I, I, I had called before, um, and I called a seller, and he ended up being a real estate agent. So when it comes down to like real estate agents and stuff, how do you guys think we should handle those type of things? That's, hey, that's a great question. Is it we'll a listing? listing? Well, hold on. We're gonna. I think we should get to that as soon as Simon is done with his simulation here, and then we can open it up for a quick Q and A before we go back into another simulation. Does that sound okay? All right. Yeah. yeah true, I was gonna true. say like, I was no. gonna say like, when I called him, the guy was like, "Oh yeah, just letting you know, I've been in the real estate. I'm like, I'm a real estate agent. I've been in the game for like 35 years. So that, that just caught me off guard. So." Beautiful. Well, well, just stick around, Malik. We're going to touch on that first thing as soon as Simon is, uh, finishes his session here, okay? So, Simon, we're going to take it back to the offer price. Just check, you know, back, re rewind it just a little bit to the point where Chris was like, well, you called me. What's your offer, okay? Yeah, so. All right. Go ahead, Chris, go ahead and say, the, say what you said about, hey, well, you're the one calling me. Um, yeah, so, hey, you know, you're the one calling me. So, uh, yeah, so after all the information that you've given me, let me, uh, would you be comfortable if I kind of went back and ran some numbers with, uh, my business partner and, uh, would give you a call back? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll be around the rest of the day. I'm going to go back to what I was <laughs> doing before you called. So. All right. So before I go in a perfect world, what, what number would you want to get out of this house? Okay. Um, in a perfect world. Uh, I would have to look at the, again, numbers, you know, the, the MLS um, records of last sales. I don't know, man, that's, <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. And I, I know I have a lot of sweat equity in this property. I have a lot of, uh, in, you know, fundamental investment into this property as well. So I, I don't know. Uh, so why don't we do this? Why don't, while you're, you know, giving me a call back and doing your numbers, why don't I do the same thing so that we're on the same page, you know, come time to talk. Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. Do you need anything from me before we hang up? No, what uh, I'll, I'll call you back in about uh, 30 minutes if that works for you. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Chris. Yep, thank you. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Malik, let's get to that. Let's get that uh, question of yours out of the way, my friend. I believe it pertained to real estate investors. Malik, if you, I don't know if it's Malik or real Malik, estate agents. Wanna, real estate <laughs> agents. Yeah, thank you. It was it's Malik, and uh, it was about um, real estate agents. I was gonna say what I did. What I did though is I I made sure to network with the guy. So I was kind of 
I kind of, I, I, th- I give myself credit for that because I kind of networked with the guy. I told him, listen, I'm a young investor and I, I'd love to keep you in my contacts because the guy actually ended up, he loved, he, he was looking for like fix and flip because he was kind of into that type of stuff, which is amazing. And I, and I told him, I was like, I let him know. I, I'm sorry for the background. I was actually at the gym right now. But um, if you guys can hear that, but I told the guy, You're I was good. like, I was like, um, <clears throat> what did I say? I was like, I said, so basically, since, you know, I'm a young investor, if I was to happen, if I happen to have any like non turnkey properties or any properties that need flip uh, or any fixing that you could possibly flip for a profit, you want me to send them over to you? And I said, yeah, of course, man, whatever you got, send me over and give me a good price. And I, and I'll be able to, um, uh, uh, we could, uh, make, uh, make a deal on something. I was like, for sure. Yeah. So overall, I, like- I, I, I would like to say that I got a buyer off of it, but, uh, Hey, uh, Malik, just out of curiosity, you said he's a realtor? So no, is, is it the agent. homeowner that's the real estate agent, or is this just you networking with real estate agents? No, no, no. So I called the seller, and yep. and, the, and the guy and the guy was like, I gave him a number, and he didn't like that number. And at the time, me, dude, that's my first, like, because I, obviously I didn't have any confidence. It was my first, my first actual call. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I got a little scared. I was like, okay, okay, whatever. He actually told me he was a real estate agent. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's, um, that sounds. Malik, uh, my, my first question to you was, where did you find this property? Was it a listing for sale by owner? Was it a listing market or was it an off market deal entirely? I, okay. It was, it was an off market deal. It was an okay, on, so it, but it was, how did you, how did you find it? I find it off. I find it on profit stream. That's the thing. Okay, perfect. All right. So next question, did you get as far as asking him uh, how the sale process would go? Is he still a licensed agent? And if so, is he going to be re- using someone in his brokerage or himself as the seller's agent? Because if so, nine times out of 10, you are not going to be able to assign that contract because they supply them. Uh, most okay. brokerages that I am aware of, there's only one, actually the fastest growing one, funny enough, in the world, in the country right now. It's called Real, Real Brokerage. Mm-hmm. Um, they are the only ones that I know of that will somewhat allow wholesaling. Otherwise, it's looked at as entirely unethical and it is completely barred from contracting anything having to do with a broker or an agent. Uh, and if you are an agent and you are working with wholesalers in the background, you are actually at risk of you losing your license. Um, you know, you guys are tasked as agents to get the most potential, you know, value out of cash value or whatever the value may be from selling your client's property, not working with someone in the back end, you know, against them. It's a conflict of interest. Like as an agent, you are selling for as much as you can as a wholesaler. You're trying to get it for as low as you can. So it's a, it's a clash. Um, and, you know, I have I know personally a few realtors that have lost their license um, and, you know, had to submit to the real estate association in regards to that. So be careful with realtors. Uh, if he's not listing you know, himself and he's not going to list it with a, you know, with a brokerage contract, then you should be okay. Otherwise, you know, it's a dead deal before it starts. Yeah. Um, I should, I should, I should have probably asked this question. I was going to him, but go ahead. Kids. So, um, yeah. And if you are going to work with an agent, you know, make sure it's completely off the table. Oh, my, I, I work with oh, an agent every day, but she's my age. We've known each other quite some time and, you know, we have an agreement, you know, where money's slipped under the table. So if you can work on something like that, then, then definitely, um, but you okay. know, as for your active listings, no way, you know, absolutely not. You know, I work with her and she brings me her buyers. Um, yeah. she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't turn properties over to me before she has the chance to list them. That's unethical. Okay. So uh, working with agents should always be on the buy side. Hey, uh, Malik, just because, um, just because you live close to me, um, that, that guy's requirements are a little, you know, a little similar. So what's, what's his name? His name was Jeffrey F. F- oh, never mind. F- never mind. I don't know who that is. Never mind. I don't know who that is. Never mind. Okay. Great. All right. Um, do we want to do a quick Q and A for anyone that has questions? There are thirty-eight of you in here. I expect questions <laughs> to be asked. I just have uh, like two simple kind of question statements and see if they're kind of correct. So like sure. when it comes to the cold calling thing, it's like okay, as some from the outside and still trying to learn. Uh, it yep. seems like con- consistency compounds, and also don't be a dick or uh-huh. selfish yeah. in a manner. And right. also number three is, sorry, I'm having a little bit of a, a brain fart on the third question. You're good, man. Uh, it'll come back to me. No worries. We'll come back. Anyone else? Uh, Eric, yeah. You just joined. Adam, do you have anything to say? I know you were adamant on getting in here as soon as you could. If you have any questions, we will do our best to answer. I had a question. Sure. If a, if a house is like fully fixed up, no issues, would it still be like smart to work a deal with them? 
Uh, if they're willing to sell at a low sell? enough price, yes. Uh, I, I would normally steer clear of those until you're seasoned a bit in this industry. Um, that's more of an agent's job, but you know, it is possible. I have done, uh, I want to say two, I think that were pretty much turnkey and it was only because I knew who they were and I was able to get it down low enough. And then again, <laughs> I was kind of, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity, which is, you know, again, unethical and you're not supposed to do that. You know, you're supposed to be solving a problem, um, and, you know, giving them a solution, which would be cash for their home. You're not looking to take what's worth more and then, you know, run away before they can understand what they actually are sitting on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, thank you. So, you know, sometimes, yes, pre foreclosures, et cetera, those are all exceptions, obviously. You know, pre foreclosures can always sometimes be fully remodeled or turnkey. So, you know, it really depends on the situation. But yes, you can. It does fit the criteria. Chris, for people who don't know what turnkey means, can you explain what does that mean, uh, turnkey? Turnkey means ready to move in, whether it's light rehab, full rehab, nicest remodel in, in the neighborhood, it's considered turnkey. I've got when, uh, I, when I refer to ready for MLS, I refer to that as the least possible, you know, money spent on rehabs, you know, light wood countertops, whatever it may be, the cheapest way out. Nice. Okay. okay. If you guys are okay. learning something, let us know. Oh. Next, next question. I I've have got a, one question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, do you what? Did I forget the question? Do you do you find the buyer first or the seller first? Chris, let's talk about the importance of having a uh, a buyer on standby, knowing exactly what they want, and then going out and finding properties that match. One more time, sorry, I was sending a text. So, oh, bogus question was: Do we should you find a buyer first, or should you find the, find the seller for, first? Which is a very um, common question. So the way that I do it is I always have a buyer set up buyer first, whether it's one, two, three, or four. That way I could fit their criteria. Um, you know, most of my buyers are looking for, you know, I'll use the, I will use Sunday's deal that I closed as an example. Um, single family, somewhat done with their rehab already. This makes it more challenging to find, but <laughs> it's sold every time. Um, mine prefer single family, somewhat done with rehab with, you know, 35, 40% margins on their profit. It's hard to fill, uh, but it works. Um, so I'll, I'll use that again as an example. So it was a, one of these Q and A's we're doing right now. Uh, some of these individuals were in the call. It turned, it started with a cold call. I do only local. So it was a cold call, but it was local. Um, I reached out at 845 at night, uh, again, just simply trying to show someone, uh, I chose a random for sale by owner on Zillow, which I don't recommend. Please don't do that. It worked out for me. It's not going to work out for you. you know, I can make it lucky with this. Um, I made the call. I spoke to him to show everyone in the Discord how to, you know, navigate conversation live, um, and I ended up securing it at 175, where he had it listed at 350, uh, and it ended up being worth almost 500 thousand dollars, and it needed very, very minimal work. So, um, I was able to secure that, you know, fairly low, and then we moved it for a pretty decent assignment fee. So, mm -hmm. I've got a quick question. Uh, yes, sir. Antonio. Okay, so um, I've been doing calls yesterday and the day before yesterday on yeah. Popstream. Actually, sorry, yesterday and Friday. Um, I downloaded maybe like 50 or I have 40 or 30 or 40 uh, contact informations from Popstream yeah. pre foreclosures, but I've only gotten one person to answer me. Is there anything that's better than Popstream? Because um, uh, we actually do. We have uh, a lot of different software that you can take advantage of. Um, if you look through our Discord, you'll be able to see kind of sort of previews of what those softwares are. Uh, some of them are like enterprise grade. You know, some of them are six, seven hundred dollars a month, whereas some of the ones that like Nate has are <laughs> upwards of five, ten thousand dollars a year. So, yeah. you know, it really depends on, you know, what you're looking for. But to answer your question, you know, the amount of time that you guys spend on PropStream, I find all of the information that you're using prop and true people search that takes you guys 40 minutes i find all of that in a matter of seconds i so can account for this because the first time i talked to you it literally only took me fucking two minutes to find my house to do who said that tell you tell you, tell you me, what, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gave me a test you were like i don't believe you and i was like okay <laughs> try me i had everything down to the phone number accurate within like 15 seconds Hey, you know so, what, uh, Chris, real quick while we're on that topic you know what i think we should do for the people that are spending their wednesday night with us sure what I think what we should do is we should let them in on this uh, 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 special opportunity we have um, on this special software that we do recommend. And you know which one I'm talking about. I can go right. ahead and share. Everybody watch share. my screen. Oh, actually, let's have Nate do no, it. I'm gonna hey, share you're a better it. presenter. 
I'm going to share it in the free chat. I mean, I'm not going to run through a demo just yet. We can do that on another day. But the question was, um, you know, we brought up the topic of PropStream. And PropStream is great. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, basically it's just a tool to not only find leads, but probably run comps, possibly even find a cash buyer. Um, we do have a software that we uh, enjoy a lot more. We talk about it a lot, especially in VIP, because it's a very, very reliable tool. And what I'm going to do is we usually keep this opportunity specifically for uh, VIP members. But for those of you listening You're all right VIPs now, today. <laughs> yeah, you're all VIPs today. Yeehaw, um, cowboy. Thanks. From today <laughs> forward, you won't be. You'll have to upgrade I'm going to give it. you guys this link, <laughs> and I'm, o- I'm only going to leave it up for the duration of this call, okay? So I just posted it in free chat. What you're seeing is it's a free trial plus free $35 in free marketing credits to, um, to Deal Machine here. Now, Deal Machine is very, very... I mean, right. and I that's only made it. possible because we are a direct partner with them. So you'll get Correct. a free trial and that's, free cart marketing like credits. And like then you when could, you sign up, you could get a free, gonna... right. You could get a free trial on your own, right? But you you're not right. going to get that free thirty-five dollars in free marketing credits because, um, or excuse me, and what that might do for you is you'll be able to send direct mail without the need for you UPS or FedEx or anything or even a headache, right? You're going to be able to uh, send direct mail straight from the app for free, a postcard with all your contact information straight to distressed homeowners that say, hey, owner of 123 Main Street, I, w- I'm, I would love to buy your house. And this could be all across the nation. If you're, in, if you're in Texas and you're trying to do Connecticut, you can send a postcard to their house, no matter who's one living point. there. And it'll all in one click. It handles everything. You don't got to worry about shipping or tax, anything like that. So, And then as a VIP member, you'll get significant discounts on your monthly plans for Deal Machine because it is expensive. It is very expensive every month. Hey, but if you're not... Every penny, so... If if you're not doing local, uh, like say, say I live in Atlanta and I find a house in uh, Louisiana or something, uh, do you have to make an LLC in a in a different state? No. To to make that deal. No. No okay. sir. No sir. For example, I'll tell you right now. I'm speaking from experience. I have my LLC set up where I live, and I'm based in Texas. So I have a Texas LLC, but I can still virtually wholesale in like Connecticut or New York or wherever else. It, it's not something that because imagine, think of it like a uh, if you had a Shopify store selling uh, women's leggings, right? You're based in Texas where you make all the leggings and stuff, but you want to sell nationwide. Imagine if you would have to set up an LLC in every state that from everybody that bought online with you. That would be yeah. it would be it'd be a nightmare. So no, um, so so the short answer is no. You're good. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have a question. Sorry to Erica. interrupt. Um, yeah, yes, hi. Let's, let's hear it. Okay, so I'm running into a lot of homes that are in foreclosure slash auction. Can I still um, reach out to no. the seller? Okay. Nope. It's a bank okay. owned ninety nine percent of the time. Good luck. <laughs> I mean, you can. Okay. You know, you can, but you're more or less gonna have to know someone. Uh, and it doesn't right. even work for myself. Like even to this day, I'll actually, I'll use today as an example. I found a really good fucking deal. And you want to know who owned it? Fucking Fannie Mae. Nothing you can do. Nothing. Right. You cannot do anything with bank owned properties. They do not allow wholesaling. You have to hold the property for 90 days in most states. Um, and most times wholesalers don't have the capital to hold for that long. Um, uh, neither do a lot of investors. You know, 90 hey, days good. before you can start work is, is a long time. So right. no, to answer your question, unfortunately not, but pre-foreclosure is going to be your best bet. So go to your county records office, grab the pre-foreclosures list, you know, water shutoff list, electricity shutoff list, tax delinquent lists. Um, they're all available for free. If you can't find it online, you could go right into the office and it's like $3 for a stack of 100 of them. Um, okay. Those are all accurate. They're up to date. So no, stay, oh, stay clear of foreclosure and then pre-foreclosure is always a breadwinner. So remember that. So pre-foreclosure, no foreclosure, no auction. Correct. And so what I've what I've gathered from uh, these chat rooms that I've been in and 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 everything else. So basically, you want to f- find a buyer's list, and you kind of want to get get a rapport built with uh, a more than one good buyer, and then kind of get a list of the kind of houses that they want, and then go back to you to look for the sellers. And the best best route to go is pre foreclosures or vacant homes or. Uh, just stuff that's in distress, right? Correct. Okay. Hey, hey, Chris. Yes. Hey, don't don't talk about Fannie Mae like that. Right now, they're helping me get these squatters out, man. That's my that's my <laughs> right now. How how Gee. are they helping you do that? I'm lost. Oh, so look, 
Uh, apparently, the owner <laughs> called like you know if anime the the whole company. I don't know what the fuck she did. I don't know. She just called uh Susa uh three three days ago or two. I don't know. Saying that, yeah, we just called them. Uh, they have to go to court on the 15th. If they don't, they're going to jail on the spot. Gotcha. Okay, fair. Guys, then, everybody uh, watch my screen. Yeah. I'm going to do a quick intro, if it's okay with Nate, of Deal Machine. I'm on a trial yeah. account, so you yeah, guys yeah, won't yeah. have any access. You guys won't have any of the paid features, so it's okay. Um, I, have a, I have a quick question real quick. Sure. Um. So, auctions, is that a viable strategy? <laughs> no. No, you got to be the cash buyer. You got you got to be if you're going to show up to an auction, you got to be ready to It, it is more than more 9 times out of 10 it's a requirement that you will have to be an buyer. You got to be like the actual buyer if you're going to go to the auction, brother. I mean, you can be Correct. there, but you're not going to be able to place bids on nothing. Um does anybody want to give me okay. an address? Let's use as an example, so we'll start. 2252 two, Gainesboro Drive, Dallas, Georgia 30157. Nice. He was ready. He took advantage of the opportunity. Hold on, Gainsboro. Spell that. Oh wait, never G -A -I -G -A -I -N -E -S -B -O -R -O -U -G -H. Wait, one more time. Oh, B R R O U G H. Got it. Burrow. No, no, it's G, G A I N E S B O R O U G H. Right here. All right. So, example of deal machine. Everything's here. Right? Is this house right here? Please tell me this yep. isn't your house. Oh uh, yeah, that's my house. Oh my god. <laughs> why why would you do that? Okay. Is this whoever this is? Is this accurate? Yeah. Okay. What about these? Yeah. Bro just Bro just docks himself to everyone. Verizon, what right? Verizon wireless, obviously wireless, and then you guys are on a do not call list, which who gives a fuck? Call anyways. That's wild. <laughs> um all of this is accurate. You know, here's your loan amounts. Uh per, this is the percent equity they own. Uh, again, prop stream shows all of this to you, but it's never accurate ever. Um, here's the lender name, uh, maturity date, term, balance. Uh, the older one, this will used to be a housing authority loan, I guess. That's cool. Um, last sale, sale history here, repair costs. Uh, you know, building condition is average. What's the website again? Uh, this is Deal Machine. So your comps. This is the last 180 days right here. This number is nine nine out of ten times accurate. If you were asked, if you were to ask a realtor, this is nine to, again ninety percent tried and true, accurate. Um, obviously, you'll do your actual research when you, you know, have an offer on the table. Of course, what Nate was talking about when it comes to sending mail, can you not access this in the trial? Oh, you have to add leads. Hey, um, hold on, real quick. The guy who was just asking what website that is, rem uh, remember, uh, we posted it just now again in the free chat. Okay, so the channel that says free chat, there's an exclusive link. If you go sign up on your own, you're not going to get the free marketing credits. I cannot stress that enough. And once you're signed or up- Or a discount if you sign up for it. Correct. Because we are negotiating with uh, Deal Machine right now to give our members exclusive- Yep, like, and exclusive they're, doing, they're doing live tutorials like I am right now in our Discord mm -hmm. once a week, I think, or something like that, or once a month or whatever. So I'm just whatever looking out for y'all. If you are going to explore Deal Machine on your own time, even if it's for the free trial, just so you can try before you buy, that's totally cool. But you might, but I would highly recommend using that link so that way, whenever we are able to apply that discount in the future, they don't have we don't have to go asking whose email and stuff like that. Whoever's okay. house this is, is one of these people you? <laughs> Do what? Yeah, is one of these? Yeah. It is okay. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> Down to every person that lives here. Like, look at just the first oh, name. So when it comes uh, to when it comes to estimated equity, what exactly does that mean? How much uh, equity in the home they lo they own? How much of their mortgage is paid off compared to what is left compared to the value of the home? So here's the mail tab that Nate was talking about. Uh, this sends every 21 days forever <laughs> until it stops. Yeah. Um, automatic, literally done. I, I literally clicked mail, send mail, done. This is what it looks like here. Um, back, done. Activity. And you can send it. That's it. Like, you know, you can add leads here. Send it there. Done. Um, ready? Watch this. Ready? Analyze. Wholesale. Watch this. Loan That's balance. Everything. everything. Ready? You're going to subtract this here. It gives you your MAO. Negative, meaning they'd have to pay off their current loan, meaning this would not make a good wholesale deal, which obviously, look at the home. It's In obviously not. Right. So let's do it again. Ready? How much? Rehab costs. Ready? Repairs. On, okay. Same thing here. Average. Right here. Down to this right here. It shows you right there. It also shows you all of this in here as well. You know, if you want to just quickly look through, there's a lot you could do here. You know, That's good these, right these aren't accurate. Um, you know, 
Cold call script. Ready? Done. Boom. We'll stop that. We'll stop that. Yes, really stop. And then again, same thing. SMS. Same thing. Everything. Everything. I mean, you're you're saving you a lot of time with this. You know what I mean? Everything. You are working very efficiently. Like, again, this is expensive, but it's worth it. So take advantage. You know, if you want this, take advantage of our discounts. You know, guys, there's, and expensive is subjective. There's different plans according to what you need. But again, you don't need anything more than the pro plan, which is like the first level, like the basic. Okay. Yeah, uh, truly. And this is coming from someone who has the pro plan. Like it gives me more than everything I need from all the Correct. way from being able to find sellers, AKA motivated sellers. So for leads, those of you right? that don't have a car, watch, watch this. Let's say you're, let's say you want to do, you live in a, in a, in a, like nowhere in the middle of nowhere out in freaking uh, Wisconsin or whatever. Ready? And you want to, and you want to do deals over here in Dallas, Georgia. Check this out. So it's like, well, I can't really drive for dollars cause I live out in nowhere. Check this out. So as you, you go, watch. it pulls everything up. Watch, ready? And as you're in your car, this works in the background. You set filters, it saves them to a lead list. Watch. Pulls it right up, ready? And you can, boom. It's just like you're simulating the driving and you have that information right there next to you. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can just pull up to any property and it'll give you everything that you need to know. Is it vacant? Is it a tired landlord? How much do they owe on the mortgage? Things like that. Okay. So again, how much on average can you get off one like deal? One more time, I didn't hear you. He's asking the average what? assignment fee per assignment fee per deal. Eight thousand five hundred dollars. Ignore That's the ones you're seeing from Joe because you're not getting anywhere near that. And neither does he. It's bullshit. They're not real. Yeah, the average wholesale over... deal is between five and fifteen thousand. Never often more. I say that hypocritically. I just did one for fifty-five, but that was a one-time thing. <laughs> it's not going to happen again. And if it let's, does, I'll let's get lucky be clear. Twice. Chris actually mm -hmm. did close a fifty-five thousand dollars deal literally just a couple of days ago, right in front of me. As and a joke to yeah. help someone. As a joke, and even he's telling you that that's not that's not average. That's not like okay, fifty-five thousand per deal. Listen to what Chris is saying: eighty-five hundred or fifteen hundred. Not the freaking TikTok that you saw for Joe Riley post to get you to join his Discord. Right. This is legit. This is the real deal. We're not, we're not. I mean, we're not shit talking him. You know, he teaches you guys a certain yeah. way. You guys have a lot of resources. I do know him in real life. You know, I'm not gonna and shit with, talk him. And he, he provides this, value. We provide hands on value there's a difference you know you everyone learns differently so correct correct and with I, this yeah. tool on average how do you how long do you think it would take to get your first deal because i just started off on like the first of december and i, I i've been like using prop stream to like take down a bunch of addresses and, and mm -hmm. using uh uh Hear me out, people man, find listen to what i'm gonna tell you do you have a car uh nah man i'm 16 i, I i'm about to be 17 oh, i'm okay, doing okay. this all right. As like so I would do what on. I say and take advantage of Deal Machine. Follow the steps I'm going to tell you and it'll work. Sign up for Deal Machine. Drive virtually in your area. Uh -huh. Find distressed properties driving virtually the same way you I'm, You guys are going to doubt me, but I got in my car this morning. I went to Starbucks and I came home with six leads and I already have one under contract. It's, yeah, it's not pretty hard. dope. Uh, yeah, I think it's not. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, all you. you. <laughs> I was saying even Kaz can attest to how powerful driving for dollars is. Like just even just going down the street to your local coffee shop, someplace that you yep. already are familiar with. Literally today, I was on my way to go get coffee at a place that I frequent often. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to turn on this app. I'm going to just take one extra block over to get there. And I stumbled across properties that I didn't even think could possibly exist in this area. Because from what I understand, I thought this was too nice of an area for there to be like some distressed properties. And I was so wrong. Yeah. All I had to do was go look just just one street over, one street over. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And I pulled it up on Deal Machine. And I was like, my I was like, oh, my gosh, it's right here. I don't even got to go nowhere. I could have walked here. But anyways, again, the, the link that you need, the, the, the specific link you need in order to take the most advantage of this and not just getting the trial, but also the marketing credits, that's going to be the uh, free chat. Okay. I just posted it there. Yeah. I was about to like do that right now and like get it. But again, like, it's a, it's a, it's I, a seven day free trial. So if you try it and you're like, eh, whatever, just cancel. No obligation. You feel what I'm saying? I'm telling you that. Yeah. You know, I, get, I understand that. But how like, like y'all didn't answer my question. How long on average do you think it would take me? Hold on. That does not no depend answer. on the software. That depends on the individual. Correct. Yeah, full blown all in whatever. That's just on the individual. There's no uh Yeah. yeah. It, you know what I'm saying? So but I can put it this way. It's like when you go fishing, are you guaranteed to catch more fish if you put two hooks in the water? 
that's subjective. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yeah, it's I can't, you can't just say, yes, you're going to catch more fish because there's two hooks in the water. Or what happens if you throw a net in the water? I'm saying these things might help. You see what I'm saying? Uh, what happens if you like set traps in the water instead of just hooks? It's like, mm -hmm. your machine is one of those things where it's like, you might as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to maximize your opportunity, then yeah, it's there. But again, it's not something, you can catch a fish if there's no net in the water. You see what I'm saying? You can catch yeah. a fish with, with just one line. You see what I'm saying? So it's not necessary and it's not required. But if you but if you have the capacity to do it, um, or you just want to give it a seven day try before you buy type th type deal, that's you know the opportunity is there for you. Yes, sir. Correct. But yep, what I recommend sorry. is if you are going to try it, actually try it to the fullest. Like, don't. I would hate for you to start the trial and not use it. You know what I'm saying? And then you feel like, yeah. you no, know, it's like, dang, you couldn't. You didn't really get a good idea on what it could do. Right. Who are you? Let me jerk. Yep. How do you pull the... No, let's do McPin. Go, McPin. Ooh. I think let's let Chris answer that. He has more experience than I do. Sorry, I'm arguing with my girl. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go ahead, McPin. One cool. more time. SMS blasting at first and then cold call it. I don't do virtual, so I'm that's my rough guess, <laughs> I guess. So so that that's another question that I that I had had. I was kind of in the uh the um <clears throat> the video for the uh the deal machine demo earlier. And one question that I had is how do you get around the whole text messages? being taken as spam like i would assume a lot of them would be looked at as spam and and like bots and stuff trying to reach out to people like that um, Make, no not necessarily that's why you personalize every text yourself exactly i was just about to say that so a lot of those numbers get put on uh, spam calls because they're literally literally sending the exact message word for word it'll say something along the lines of hi hi i'm a local investor in your area are you interested in selling your house if so call me at this number and it's, it'll be that copy and paste it. It's very generic and it can apply to every property. So they send that out to hundreds or if not thousands of numbers all at once just to see if they get some bites. Well, that's a quick way to get on the freaking spam list because your phone carrier is picking up on that. It's like, dude, this dude is literally spamming the same message to phone numbers that they've never messaged before. But if you just take the time to manually say, hi, Clarissa, or hi, David, I'm reaching out for the property on one, two, three Main Street or four, five, six Mount Rushmore Drive. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, Just I did that. Up. I did that with PropStream and I did that with a lot of numbers and I didn't even get like a single answer back. Well, uh, can I ask you how you went about formatting your old text? Yeah, here, I'll, I'll read one for you. And <clears throat> what Chris has told me is PropStream is almost kind of useless compared to what he is using, which is what y'all dropped in the free chat. Yeah. I mean, wait, look, PropStream is not useless. Let's be clear. A lot of good people have made good money on PropStream. It's, it's like a, you know, what kind, of, what kind of hook is in the water? What kind of bait are you using? What kind of, what brand is the fishing line? It's, you know, some oh, things perform oh. better than others. So it's not, not, it's not necessarily that it's useless, but we're, we're, we're only going to recommend what is the best in our opinion. You know what I mean? The, the format Brian that I use that is, is, I'll read one, is... I said, hey, David, my name is Simon. I'm looking to make you a cash offer on your property at blah, blah, blah. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And that was it. Sure. Are you, are you, how's your punctuation? Great. I, I, use, I, I use perfectly good grammar. Sweet. And then, okay, which, now where did you source this number? These numbers, I should say, that you were texting. PropStream. PropStream. Okay. All right. Well, the, the problem mean, with PropStream, though, is that like when I would skip trace uh, a property, it would give me like seven different phone numbers for one person. I got you. I, I, I think I have a good answer for you. Um, now, when you were on PropStream, I don't know this from experience, so I need you to tell me. When you were on PropStream, did it tell you which the association for each number? In other words, did it say that this number is likely a relative or likely a tenant or likely the owner? No. It, so gave me like three, it gave me three different categories. It would give me sell, landline, and other. So what I'm going to do might interest you. I'm going to share my screen in just a second. It's only going to be for uh, a minute or two. 
But I would love to show you this right here. One second. Stand by. Stand by. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to share my screen here. Pull it up. So again, I'm not just trying to I'm not just trying to sell a deal machine here, but I am going to show you because it would, genu it, it would genuinely uh, answer the question. So as I asked, PropStream, does hey. PropStream show you uh, likely owner? Do you want to put up one more message in the Enterprise Elite chat? So hold on. Hey, Chris, your, your mic is still on, my dude. Okay. So for, those, for the person that was just asking about that, so look at my screen right here. So yes, I have numbers here, but additionally, it tells me that this owner is likely the or excuse me, this number is likely the owner. Um, compared to this guy, look, there's another phone number attached to this property. There's some guy named Diego. But this one tells me that this is a resident. You see the difference? So I could call this guy, but it would be, he would be the resident versus this guy who's likely the owner. And gotcha. furthermore, furthermore, not only does it give me the, the, the phone numbers that it has, but it gives me what kind of phone it is and how active it is. So based on this information, I can tell like this is probably the actual number because um, it's wireless, Verizon, you know, verified versus this number, which is a landline and it hasn't had any usage within the last two months. Now, who's going two months without using their phone? You see what I'm saying? So you personally would call them instead of send them a text? Me, look, or how do, you know how, to gauge, how do you know how to gauge that, I guess? How do you know whether to call somebody or text them? I'm glad you asked that question, and I'm glad that you started it with personally, because I can only talk about me personally, and not because I think it's better, but because I think it's better for me, like me as an individual, as Nate. So like me personally, I know that I probably carry and can, uh, I can deliver more tone if I'm able to get on the phone with them. And even if I can't get on the phone with them, just leaving the voicemail, the energy that I'm able to place onto the voicemail versus how well I can word a freaking uh, a text message, that's where I think I excel in. And that's why I personally prefer to call first, leave a voicemail second, and if still nothing, then I'll, I'll follow up with a text saying that I called. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's that. So that, that's, let me just do one more, and then I'll uh, let the next question come in. But like, I'll click on another property. Let's say that this was it. You'll see that it tells me it's cash buyer, absentee owner, corporate owner. Um, uh, Richard Beck right here, but rem here's why I wouldn't call this number. Okay. Now, even though it says likely owner, here's why I would not call this is because I can look at the sale history and I can see that in 2018, Russell sold it to Richard Beck, which is this guy. But then a year later, Richard Beck sold it to a corp a corporation. And that corporation isn't necessarily on here because you know, it's a corporation. Um, Similarly, there's another number here that says Allison Beck, but I assume with the same last name as Richard, and she's also on the title right here, Richard Beck and Allison Beck, they sold it to the corporation. So I can call them probably to say, you know, best case scenario, I can call them to see if they can uh, point me in the direction of the corporation, but there's nothing in it for them. So I don't really see how, I don't think that would be worth um, exploring, okay? But, but you can see how I got all this information without ever calling anybody. See how much I know about the property just without even talking to anybody? Um, I just want to find one more that I can show you. I okay? am back. Right here. So the owner, I can look at the sale history and I can see that in 2005, Steven sold it to some guy named David. But all I have to work with are family members. See how it says uh, Kevin's family, uh, Charles's family, 